Gabriel. We've not popped up yet. Who's a pop up? Oh, we're not just a pop up. We're here all the time, was you know. Oh, I must make sure this is muted. Otherwise, I'll get me sent again. Well, let's uh, let's begin. begin. Good evening and welcome to Raconteur's News, um, your beacon of, um, well, well, just a little bit of light-hearted stuff um, uh, as we look at the news. I mean, we do cover serious issues, but a little bit of light-heartedness um, as well. Pop, pop rolled into like a big bun that you can shove in the oven and I don't know where I'm going with this, but <laughs> it started off all right and then it tailed off after off after a bit um as my name's jason holmes and we're on to eight uh, eight until ten on monday and tuesday evening um and of course i'm joined by my uh, erstwhile co-presenter aid hardy good evening aid morning how was your weekend been brother yeah good 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 yeah good uh, my team won twice awesome and me and and the american team that i follow they won as well so you know Good man, good, good, well, good for that. Are you talking about uh, Sheffield Steelers? You're talking about um, skidding, aren't you? Ice, ice hockey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah skidding, <laughs> brilliant, yeah, a, proper, a proper man's game, yeah, yeah. It, do you know when I used to go ice skating, you know, when I had two legs, when I on the odd occasion that I went ice skating, my fucking feet afterwards killed. I don't know how they do it, they must have these right proper. I mean, to be fair, I were working where it's spasmos. I was just going to say, you know, when, when you look at a pair of skates that are probably best part of a thousand quid nowadays. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and anyway. Uh, two, two pence plaggy boots. Yeah, I, I just thought I'd find this that's behind me. Um, You could, probably can't read it, but it actually says, I don't know why I'm looking because it's not really there. It says Rotherham Borough Council, <laughs> <laughs> where everyone matters. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, everyone matters. Ah, please, yeah, please. To do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fucking Rotherham Council. Yeah. Um, this just, I uh, just one thing I've noticed. I've noticed there's a lot of people, uh, particularly on post uh, on uh, social media, and I'll name one. Um, Gareth, uh, Gareth Ike. Um, uh, people reporting that they're getting more and more anxiety. I don't know whether it's something to do with social media, whether there's some sort of algorithm they're putting in there. Uh, whether they've sorted out a way to make somebody feel because we did uh, we were part of an experiment to it and they did admit that they were doing um, experiments weren't they didn't they uh, that they were doing see if they could change people's moods and stuff um, so a lot of people taking a break from social media and they've spotted that so that's that's good good, eh? good. get off it shut it down fuck it off it's wank it's shit well it gets saying goodbye out. I guess this show out. That's all we do. So we're, we're, yeah, we're, we're, by the way, we're on the Facebook platform. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that. So switch it off apart from that bit. <laughs> so if you're, if you're listening, Zook, I call him Zook. Uh, we all do, all his mates. If you're listening, Zook, uh, yeah, we, we apologise about that. Um, so let's get on to our, our guest for this evening. Now this were it were Aidy's idea, so I'll, I'm going to get Aidy to introduce um, our guest and to. Uh, because he did have a whole big like thinking behind it. Yeah, my brain uh, just kind of sometimes, just, yeah, it just gets diarrhea and just yeah, you know, sounds just kind so, of just. Uh, oh, by the way, before we go, before we start, mm. I want to say, fucking Sky or a bunch of fucking that's gauzy bastards. You know what they've done? Right? I finished. I fucked my Sky off, right? So I've paid a, um, I've done me months notice. I had football on. Sky. You know, and shit like that on Sky. Decided it were too much. We didn't want to fucking what, pay for it anymore and pay to watch fucking adverts. That's one thing. On a subscription channel, you shouldn't watch it. There shouldn't be any advertisements. It should completely be. agree. There, yeah, you're paying twice. Mm. But anyway, the thing about it is, is that um, the sort of switch the Sky box off. Now we've changed to BT, so we need an aerial. But because of the fuck up that went on, we're not getting an aerial until this Friday. Thursday, sorry, we're getting not getting an aerial for till this Thursday, so we need an aerial for a lot of the stuff, you know, the free stuff to come through. Mm. Well, um, so I thought, well, we'll just leave the skybox on when the subscription's over, 
you know, it'll just be like a free view. We have to watch the free channels. Well, we have to watch the subscription channels, right? Yeah. Fine. Fair enough. No, no, no. They completely shut your box down, so you can't watch fuck all. <laughs> so we've got um, – we've – but we haven't got BBC, which is probably um, um, a good thing. Mm. But anyway, it's just the, the, just what a bunch of fucking spiteful little wankers that they are. Um, so uh, they're not going to get another fucking penny from us, are they, though, ever no, never. in the life? No. No. Anyway, go on, Aid. You carry yeah, on. Yeah. Um, well, let's, before we do anything, let's just uh, introduce um, <laughs> Mark. I'm just going to say Mark. I'm not going to say who he is, although his name's on the screen. Because <laughs> he's currently banned <laughs> for doing the sort of videos that he does, which is um, destroying chills and saying, look, you know, this person isn't what they appear to be. Um, so, uh, Mark, hi, mate. How are you doing? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought I was listening to one of your shitty little videos. I, you know? I figured I'd have to come in that way, seeing you, <laughs> you come in this morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Not me thinking behind tonight. Um, if I just kind of get me a little bit of notes, right? What the way my brain kind of worked was it's as you probably know, Jason and I live well, Jason definitely lives in South Yorkshire. I've lived in South Yorkshire once, twice, three times. Um, and at the moment, uh, for the past three and a half years. I live just, and I mean literally just over the border into northeast Derbyshire. Now, it's no secret, um, well, it shouldn't be, uh, that Rotherham Borough Council and South Yorkshire Police um, have made considerable mistakes that have been brought out in the public arena in the past God knows how many number of years. Now... <laughs> Coincidentally or not, young Mr. Jason Holmes has been involved in some of those. Um, and there is then a, a link through to um, Mark. Mark lives down in um, Luton. I know I won't mind me telling you that. And, of course, down there in Luton is Tommy Robinson. Now, a few months ago, we couldn't have even mentioned his name without getting a strike on the channel and probably the channel shut down, but I'm hoping we can now without that happening. What I wanted to kind of do is bring Jason in to explain his thing with South Yorkshire Police. So, right, okay. Um, Jason, when was Hillsborough? What, what, what's, how long ago was that? You know much no. more than me. You're a Sheffield Wednesday fan. I know it wasn't a Sheffield Wednesday game, but it was at Hillsborough. When was that? 1989. Okay. Again, it's no big secret that since 1989... Um, there were, is it 97 people 96. died? Sorry? 96. 96 people died that day. And, uh, and, a, and a lot of people's families were affected by that. And at a public meeting and um, on other things that Jason and I have done, the chap that actually wrote the Hillsborough report, which was uh, Jason's friend, Tony Farrell, um he was expected to write a report saying that nothing to see here, everything's fine. Where actually, no, not Neil's report. No, not Neil's report. Sorry. No, Tony Farrell. Tony Farrell was. Uh, he didn't write the Hillsborough report. That's way before his time. Oh right, okay. T Tony Farrell was um, a, um, an analyst. So he was um, uh, an intelligence analyst. I think he said principal intelligence analyst. That's right. Yeah. For South Yorkshire Police, and what they mm. did is they asked him to write a report about they, they want some more funding. Um, and so what it did, what they wanted him to do is to um, write a report asking what the impact of terrorism could be on South Yorkshire. All oh, right. Islamic terrorism. And he said, he, he said, well, no, because it's all done by government and they sacked him. So, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, but, yeah, but it, I mean, because he's, South, because he's been in, involved in South Yorkshire police, he's also been... Uh, privy to um, some of the things that, would be, that were going on at Hillsborough and also he's also been privy to a few people he's had a few conversations shall we say with people about um, what really happened that day. Yeah and and of course since then he's been not covertly um, what's the word I'm looking for observed, he's been overtly observed where the police have literally just stood in front of him as if to say we're watching you 
um, quite a few times. Then uh, also with uh, South Yorkshire Police and Rotherham Council was the, um, there was a journalist, um, God, what was his name? Andrew Norfolk. He's the guy from the Times. Is he the one that you was on about the other day, Jason? I don't think so. Well, Andrew Norfolk saw a court report of about eight or ten men who had uh, raped a young girl, a child, in, I believe it was Manchester, in 2010, 2011. From there, uh, and he was working at the Leeds office uh, of the Times at the time, of the Times at the time. Um, and what he basically did, he just said to his editor, can I run with this for three months? And, of course, he was looking at um, gangs of men who were raping young girls. And, of course, over three months, he then went down to see his editor in London, thinks his boss was going to say, yeah, good job. And what his boss said, then said was, right, you're going to do this for another four years. So the Times just would not let this lie. And, of course, what they came up with was that a lot of the men who were involved in these gangs were chiefly... Pakistani Asians um, and there were cases where there were you know 13 14 men in a room with an underage girl who was naked drunk and off her face on the drugs that they'd smashed down her face and the police would come in and arrest the young girl for being drunk and disorderly which is just madness and bonkers and I needed to do that bit before I brought Mark in because down in Luton is Tommy Robinson and there's a lot of history behind Tommy Robinson that a lot of people in uh, who've looked at him since he kind of became big enough in the media to have God knows how many thousand people chanting his name at the gates at the end of Downing Street. I don't know anybody else whose name's been chanted by thousands of people at the government railings at the end of Downing Street. So Tommy Robinson did something or got to do something. What I want to ask of you, Mark, is this. The child stuff that was going on, not just in Rotherham, but in a lot of other towns, is what Tommy Robinson seemed to latch on to. When did that happen? Was, was that his um, thing from the beginning? Um, what was it that sort of got him to that point? Because that's, that's the thing that really brought him up in the public eye, as far as I could see. What's your thoughts on it? Well, my, my thoughts are he's he's come from the BMP, yeah, Nationalist Party. And yeah. when you look at um, the the word everyone hates, N-A-Z-I, mm. you've got Nationalist Zionist, right? And okay. Some people can't get hold of that and want to call it N-S-N-A-S-W-P-T-S, anything but N-A-Z-I. <laughs> um, they want to try and make it mean anything else clearly that's what it means and to anyone with uh, any sense of what's going on in the world the true history of how we've ended up here will come to that easily easy, easily without shadow of a doubt i don't know i don't know if any of you two agree that that's what it means without a shadow of a doubt but do you do well, it originally it came from the um what was the uh, party in germany wasn't it yeah, they, they only ever put in the Nationalist Party. So basically, uh, over here, we would say, oh, the Nazis were the BMP, right? But it still doesn't mean, you know, obviously Nazi doesn't stand for what British Nationalist Party, right? Mm. Um, because the Nationalist Party are being led by the Zionists, yeah, not not the other way around. It's not a, it's not a, um, a joint venture. Where, where the nationalists know about it, like the British nationalists, if you're born in Britain, you're probably, you know, unless, unless you've been brought up by certain uh, families, you're probably going to be for looking after your country and your countrymen, right? As most people are in whichever country they are. Um, so so they, they've, they've, you know, they've kind of given the game away now to what's going on as far as I can see. And we can see exactly the same thing trying to happen in, in the UK as what happened in Germany. They're now trying to get everybody over to the nationalist side of things, yeah? Um, <clears throat> and they're going to be ruled again by the Zionists, which is obviously, or, you, you know, whether you want to call them elite, 
because of course if you use the word zionist they've already put that in the dictionary to mean it's a jew who wants a land of their own but zionists hide in all religions they hide in all cultures that's what they do best they're actors that's why everything's a stage politics you know they're all actors everything on your tv is actors whether it's a news reader whether it's a politician you know they're, they're all acting they're all just playing their part doing their lines going on getting paid thank you very much um so tommy robinson's come from the nationalist party and as we can see now as his fall comes you know I, I, nobody needs to knock him anymore they're knocking him himself now then the, the the zions are knocking him yeah they're going right yeah they're, they're all changing their routine going oh yeah i was all for him but now i'm going to wow him before he completely crumbles so it looks like hey i told you so right and all the all the people go oh yeah yeah you told us first well even though they were hooraying him and getting everyone to fund him right um so so that's really where we're at now where they're trying to really and as you see you'll see all these new characters coming into play on youtube facebook with these big voices like tommy robinson but now they're going Tommy's bad. Tommy's bad. No, we just hate. Uh, we just want. We're scared. Britain's going to be non-white in a hundred years. Yeah, that's their whole thing. It's it's back to about the mm. colour of your skin, right? Um, <clears throat> and they're trying to make, of course, give give immigration the uh, the label of where the problem is. And then we've got uh, Paul Golding coming back. Um, all of a sudden he's jumped back in and there's a new Manchester story, which is exactly the same as the Rotherham story. Um, even down to the police saying they were, oh, we're too scared to be called um, racist. But they'll pull people over in their cars, left, right and centre, take pick them up for drugs, left, right and centre. They're not scared to call, get called racist. And and people suck this up. They, believe, they go, oh, that's why they didn't arrest them for 30 years or whatever, yeah? They don't nobody ever asks questions who's the top dog who was running that grooming gang right um and 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 some of these grooming gangs the press don't give a shit. they can put another 10 blokes 50 blokes or whatever in to replace them yeah so it's the people who are hiring these are, are bringing them out of jails you know from whatever gutter they find them they don't just hire pakistanis they don't just hire russians they don't just hire they hire anyone that will take the bidding and do do the work for them and then when they want to they'll just either out real ones or they'll just put it in their press that they would act to cause political you know again cause division have this political agenda which is now again what we saw with the jews but all these people that claim they're all for the jews and i'm i'm the anti-semitic for daring to say zionist right um seem to forget what happened in germany yeah exactly the same thing but it's against jews and now they're trying to do the same thing against the muslims um so if, if you look at it the, the the zions cannot be jews if they rounded jews up for israel can they how can they possibly be jews if they were rounding them all up from europe to send them to israel right they're not their friends yeah um and and it, it's all it's all just a big game, and you know we've been fool enough to to go along with it for three hundred so years or however long, um, and it seems to repeat itself in history. The situation we we seem to keep doing the same shit throughout history, right? And we get to this end of time. It's 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 really the end of uh, an era, isn't it? Where this is how we used to live. Now this is how we're going to live, and it's going to play out one way or the other. Whether we've got you know maybe it's 500 million people left or whether we've battled it and gone right we've put the animals in the zoos and released the creatures right so as far as you're concerned if as, the 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 rise of because my question were going to be <clears throat> do you think that um tommy robinson and what you'd call the right I won't call him the far right so I just don't even the right we'll just call it just that's what people can understand but the right do you think I was going to say do you think they were opportunistic um in jumping on this um, whole Asian gangs um raping or do you think that that was placed there for them and then people like Tommy Robinson were told go and look at this go and, yeah. and, and make this a big a big um, a big problem you I mean, know the thing is it would definitely have been placed there yeah because uh 
they, they brought him up a certain way and then they and and the press you know if anyone believes anything in mainstream media press you know you can't the problem with uh, with Tommy Robinson's crews and and the people who pick up and believe that story is they're always the people who will say mainstream media is lies, but then they'll cherry pick the stories they want to be true, right? And it's like, well, so so when it's a Muslim headline, that's true, but all the rest of the mainstreams a lie. Is that what you're saying? You know, make your mind up: is mainstream a lie or is it true? Mm. Uh, so you know that, and and. and Politrix is run on off the media. Yeah, the media is is Politrix's biggest market marketing tool, right? So anytime they want us to feel in any fucking way possible, excuse my French, they're going to do it, right? If you look at the feminist movement, look at you know the the, the mind control under the feminist movement, and um, that was to to get our children into school at the earliest age to uh, to indoctrinate, right? Which is now two years old, as we see women now are more career focused than having the baby at their teat right making sure it's getting all the nutrients and you know father and mother teaching it they just send them to school come home tired send them a bed the schooling does all the pretty much 99.9 percent .9 of of what that kid's going to grow up and believe do whatever right um and and that was the major part of the the feminist movement um obviously to get the women taxed as well um, and probably stop them from sitting at home doing what we've all done, uh, educating ourselves to figure out how the system really works. And, you know, so there's a lot of time, you know, we, but with every story, there's usually an agenda. It doesn't matter how small or, you know, how inferior you might think that story will be. There'll be some kind of agenda or there'll be some kind of code. Those, you know, that, everything that's written, like 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 a James, one of the James Bond movies says, uh, I'll write the press today. I'll write the stories today for, you know, two weeks ahead, five weeks ahead, or however long ahead they want. And that's what they do, right? Um, they bring in the story and it's for an agenda and they're only going to tell us what they want us to know. Um, they're never going to tell us anything that they, you know, we're never going to, we're never going to know anything um, that they don't want us to know. Well, uh, I, I, I did just when you mentioned that, when you mentioned uh, women starting to go to work, so that they couldn't sit, they weren't sitting at home, and you know they'd be in the tax, and then I don't know whether they'd be in the unemployment figures um, if they were housewives or not. I don't know. It depend. Would I, I suppose they won't be claiming benefits because if their husband were working, because back then that's what it were. You could have a house. You know, you you rent your house off a council. Now I heard uh, there's something crazy. That the reason why they got uh, women into work is because they wanted um, when Thatcher decided to do all the sell-offs, it sell you know the council a right to buy thing, um, and everybody then started buying their own house, and then up popped all these places which were DIY places because people wanted to do stuff to their own house, and they wanted the women to fill those. That's that's why I, I don't, I, I'm not I, I, I'm not giving any strength to that but i just thought it was quite an interesting story but you, you, i suppose you could um th there's many way reasons for to get women into work yeah yeah there's always going to be you know it, obviously it's the breakdown the family unit that's a major one but but the, the biggest reason was to get our kids into school at two years old because then already you, you're taking away that bond from the mother aren't you too early um yeah. So you're breaking the bonds and as we see our parents bond is nothing like it probably was 200 free at well probably before 1666 but certainly I, over the course of my generation i've noticed how the bond of the uh the family unit now is starting to completely you know break down there's not that uh cemented sticking up for your family type thing anymore there's you know not 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 in everyone's obviously i know a lot of families out there will be saying look that's wrong but, you know, we look around, right, and we can see kids on the street now. Homelessness is like every, every town, I don't care what town you live in, you're probably walking past it when you go to town every every day, even if you're just walking down your side streets, you're seeing probably seeing people homeless, right? And they're getting younger and younger. Once upon a time, you see the old man, right? Now it's young girls on the street of 18, 17, 16, more and more in each town, whereas before they'd only go to London. Like the youngsters would run off to London, wouldn't they? Yeah. Um, now it's every town's got their big problem and nobody's bothering to understand why it's happening 
And as we see, like, I, I done a video where the police break into my house and uh, they allowed a locksmith because it was over meters. And I just refused. I refused to take that, uh, that corporation name. I refused to, you know, accept it as mine. So therefore, it's not me. Um, and I refuse to just keep paying the gas and the electric that the British government, whoever, you know, the, the, the bankers sold off, um, telling us that, oh, now there's going to be a load of different companies as gas electric will get cheaper. And now it's gone up like beyond, like it, it's now another like bill that you've got to worry about. And when I was 16, I think 17, oh, I moved out of house when I was like 16. But I always remember like, you know the gas electric it wasn't um it wasn't uh it wasn't one of them things that you, you had to think about paying you know you always had that little bit of change do you know yeah I mean? it would just now, it would just be like, one of them thing yeah it was just like a bill behind the on the mantelpiece and it got paid end up getting yeah. paid and, and gas and electric has turned into the equivalent of uh of, of probably pretty much a car loan or mortgage back in the day right you, if you see the and, and a, a mortgage is just beyond like anyone's you know anyone coming out of school college now they've got they've got a, a university loan that's the equivalent of pretty much a mortgage back in when i left school so now they're walking out with this debt that's the equivalent to a loan before they've even thought about buying a car a house and, and it just you know I, I, if people can't start to understand what's going on in the world and keep voting for it keep consenting to it keep to accepting it then it's going to be their own stupid downfall because the, the, the end is coming. And I'll tell you something else. What I was telling you before we come on in, let me just get out before I forget. <laughs> right, so it's a book, right? Somebody, and, and believe me, right, the guy who sent me this, I was explaining to him, he's an older boy. He's a personal friend of mine, right? And he's got no interest in anything I say. Like, he listens. He's not one of these people who just, ah, but he, he understands that probably what I'm saying is true um and and he's heard a fair bit from me but he's he's kind of lived his life i think he's in retirement he's like look don't bother me with that shit i'm not i don't care whatever they do i'm doing my bit you know it doesn't bother me but he said yeah yes yeah. and it's uh a book from dean coonies right and it's uh dean coon teen teen dean coots coons please coons coots coons yeah, yeah k-o-o-n-t-z Right. Yes, two points. He's a best-selling um, author of, of the New York Times. Okay, and he wrote this book in 1981, <laughs> and he does fiction, right? But he's New York. Mm -hmm. Remember, he's New York Times. So he's if he's a reporter for the New York Times back in 81, he's probably part of the uh, part of the, the whole thing. Yeah, he knows everything he was writing was a lie. And he, and he writes in this book, in around 2020, a severe pneumonia-like illness will spread throughout the globe, <clears throat> attacking the lungs and the bronchial, uh, bron bronchial tubes and resisting all known treatments. Almost right. more, sorry, it's baffling, baffling than the illness itself will be the fact that it will suddenly vanish as quickly as it arrived. Attack a ten, a, again ten years later, and then disappear completely. Right, <clears throat> this is still a part of that same book, and it's got he's he's surrounded L I C H E R in here. So I'm not sure I haven't checked that out. I didn't even notice that, but I'll check what that means. There's probably a reason. Um, they call the stuff Wuhan 400. Right. Because it was developed in their R RDNA labs outside of the city of Wuhan. And it was the 400th viable strain of man made microorganisms created for yeah, Wuhan 400. So that's, this is coming from, right? The end. Yeah, someone sent me that the other day. Yeah, the eyes of darkness by that. Uh, Kuntz or whatever his name is, um, written in 1981. Now, is that yeah. is that just coincidental or? You know, they're all coincidences. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> they're all coincidences. Come on, how many times have a coincidence happened? 
So they must it must be a coincidence that there's so many coincidences. Co yeah, just everything's coincidence. coincidental times. The coincidence, yeah. It's just yeah, I agree, man. It's, <laughs> it's madness, <laughs> isn't it? But you can see where, where we're going. So so when you look at people like Tommy Robinson, you can see there's a lot more of them out there. Tommy's been obviously given mainstream media attention massively throughout the years of his rise. Um, so he's been, he's been, you know, uh, he's been taken from the BNP. Whether he's got, you know, uh, a more heavy bloodline, I don't know. I don't, I don't think he has personally because I know that he went to school, to, you know, normal school here. He was a bully to girls. Um, you know, I know, Mark, I know. Did you did you did you go to the same school at the same time or? No, 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 no. He's he's a bit younger than me, but I know people who like when I used to have Facebook and I started off doing the, uh, you know, screaming out, "What the hell's this guy?" You know, and that was when the uh, EDL really started. Um, but I knew, you know, I was a bit more street then. I was a bit younger, so I, I knew a lot of people, and uh, especially in Luton, you know. Um, so that I knew people that knew him and knew what he'd done, what his sunbed shop was, you know, a front for uh, the old snort, um, all of that. And we knew that he was just a, a nasty piece of shit. And then what he was saying and that about Luton was just bullshit, you know, trying to act like uh, all Lutonians feel like he does. And it, and it was just grinding me. And I was like, wow, if somebody else, you know, I guess it's up to a Lutonian to out a Lutonian or no one else will uh, listen. And I expected more Lutonians to hopefully do it, but <laughs> that's how naive I was back in the day, right? Um, but again, that's you a start lot of like, well, people don't give a shit. Once they've, you know, if they've got that, if they've, as you see with all my videos, yeah, have a look at whoever I'm out in. You always get the hate, right? People aren't, oh, thanks for letting us know. Shit, I'll keep an eye on him. Like if someone, anyone tells me about a shield, yeah, I don't care how much I love them. First of all, I'm not going to take a word for it. I'm going to go and figure it out. Right, what do you know? Ask them, what, why do you say that? If they can't come up with anything, then sorry. But, you know, when you can come up with a million things and they're still shouting and, and, and there's something probably more you know, for other reason why to me, why are they doing that sort of shit, right? They're probably more involved. It's more about themselves. They're, they're probably guilty of something. And now they've got this crowd that are all guilty of the same thing. Um, they don't want anyone to break that little crowd up, do they? Because now they can go around with a bunch of scumbags that love what they do. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. Yeah. Just, it's just really Sorry, go on, Eddie. Go on, I'm just going to say, just going back, because we've talked a bit about the future, but... You know, when I was saying that um, this news reporter worked out that, you know, because originally when he said to um, uh, the people at the court, you know, what what connected all these men, nobody wanted to say anything. And they went, well, hang on a minute, they're all Pakistani Muslim men. What, what the fuck's going on here? And then started to get really into it. So that, well, he said he did it for five years. So that's going to be, I don't know. 2014 2015 i guess at what point did tommy robinson either jump on that bandwagon or did he decide it was going to be what he was doing or was it what he was doing from the beginning did he sort of rise up with that um subject i'm pretty sure if, if i remember rightly um he, he started off obviously with the media because since 2003 right though that's that's when was it 2003 um fucking hell that's how bad i'm 9 11 right it's 2001 yeah 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 sorry so 9 11 2001 and then i think was it 2007 was the uh the the bombing of the train station right was it a bus or the train station seven seven oh, well, seven seven you mean yeah that was 2007 was it 2005 <laughs> So you're all, you're you're right, right, anyway. you think. So, so should, you should remember not to come into the Dragon's Den without your numbers <laughs> right. I'm, I'm so bad at the numbers. Like I keep saying like the 1937 or I, I, I believed it was a 1388 cancer act. And then I'm looking, I'm going, what is 39? I never remember it being 39. Um, yeah, 39, wasn't it? 
Yeah, yeah, and they got a 37 in, in America. America's got the 1937. But I'm sure it's 38 or something. And I used to always say it wrong. I've been saying it wrong for years. And then I looked at it and I went, 30 fucking nine? What? I don't ever remember it fucking 39. <laughs> I'm going to out Mark. He's clearly a shilly got a year wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that's the problem, isn't it? Once you get anything like this. Yeah. You can be so meticulous because people all of a sudden try to act smart by going, actually... It was 1930, and it's like, yeah, okay, so I got a year, you know, somewhere around then, anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I can't even rem- like the, the the year the uh, the our queen like come in, um, our, our new royal family, the the imports, yeah, was the early 18th century, and I think it was 1706. But I know Charles II only lasted a year on the throne, and uh, um, and then they had no no royal family for 50 saint years right um and charles the first of course had put in the 1627 uh right what was it 1627 um petition of right which basically said you can't tax man you know and then you got 1666 cesc act straight after you know not long after uh the death of charles the second who only lasted one year after his father died right under great fire of london and the Great Fire of London and and the plague, yeah, you can start to put things two and two together quite simply, can't you? <laughs> and go fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's, yeah. It's, it's it's scary, you know. I think I, I find it all. I think anyone's going to be, and that's why people don't want to look at it in it because they get so scared. They're like shit. Um, but yeah, going back, I mean, Tommy Robinson obviously set set the EDL up from the BMP. So I think. I think they were they were going to let the BMP take this right, but then they decided that actually we don't want to make the nationalist party sound like it's just you know this will instantly out it as racist to anyone who's not going to follow that hate of Pakistanis, and we go back to the seventies, don't we? And there's still plenty of people out there all, uh, fucking Pakis and all this and oh, use uh, I can, I can a, remember when I was born in Scunthorpe. And when you go down, uh, I guess, the Frodingham Road area of Scunthorpe, it was, well, when I was a kid, in our naivety, we were told it was called Pakiland because that's where all the Pakistanis had just moved into. And, and we were, oh, okay. If you go down there today, it's full of Polish shops. Yeah. Um, no, I think I think Paki would have started off in England probably just as a as a you know like you might say oh that's a Poles area or yeah well exactly. to me yeah to me the word Paki was never a an and, and, and Paki's called themselves Paki's it's like niggers called themselves niggers kind of yeah, yeah. About, but you, well, you know me, I mean? it, it's, it's it was just, just but, the first four letters of where you're from <laughs> so I would be a well, I remember- you know, I remember when I was a kid, we used to call, we used to say Blackistani, so we had no idea whatsoever about fucking anything <laughs> apart from that, a, a Blackistani. Yeah, I think, and to be fair, I think wherever you go in the world, if you're not from there and you and you become a congregation where you're like, so if, if I went and I, I, I if I go to, um, say, if you go to where was it I'd come back from, um. Cyprus, right? If you go to Cyprus, yeah, and you go to the part of Cyprus that's mainly English colonized, right? Probably all the Cypriots have a name for us, right? You know, whatever it is, they've probably got a name for us. Oh, we've lost him. Oh, oh he's back. He's he's back. Back. hang on. <coughs> oh, back. We lost you there a bit, chill. I lost you two. You two went off sort of funny. I don't know. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. Crack on, you're all right. We're back now. But yeah, I think I think wherever you go, that that you're always going to have that kind of you know where where they're going to call that little club over there something, and probably based around. But it's when you start to take it to the proportions, and it's usually pressure press, of course, that pushes it through these rights and lefts. Um, you know, through poly tricks, through all the things you shouldn't be uh, a, a part of the cult of, right? Because all of it's a cult, whether you're right, you're left, whether you're red, you're blue, it, you know, even the, the flags are cult, the, you know, it's all part of, of this cult that people 
don't believe they're in and will never see it, but they definitely are, right? I say to people, like, with flags, you're more likely to go and kill a good man um, and save a bad man than you are the opposite way over a flag, yeah? Because, you know, you might, you're just going to go across somewhere and because based on a belief that it's for your country, you're just going to kill people and not even... And, and you'll probably stand next to a complete scumbag doing it and maybe even save his life doing it, right? Based on him just having the right flag and the other guy having the wrong flag. And it's like, wow, it's, it's just, it's, it's a mental asylum. The whole, the whole system's a mental asylum and we are the mental patients, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, well, if you went to a battlefield and just went, well, hang on, guys, just stop a minute. Uh, just so I'm clear, who are the good guys and who are the bad guys? Neither side's going to say, oh, we're the bad guys. No, they're just going to put a fucking arrow through your head, you dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's why I, I don't think people can understand the uh, story of like World War II when the Germans and the British on Christmas Day played football and that. And it, it was that whole, look, I don't want to be fighting on Christmas fucking day, and nor do I. And, it, and, and I think they, you know, and they realise, hey, we're just men. And then they go back and then they go and fight for a belief in a flag, right? Because that's really what they're doing. Mm. And, it's it's that, that, belief, it? and, it. and look at us. We, we brought out a school all singing Queen songs and Royal Britannia and blah, blah, blah. And we, we believe that, oh, right, this little island's our home. Right? Whereas, is it really? Is not the world our home? You know, and these people now, the Nationalist Party's saying, basically, we're now going to tell people who, you know, they can't travel, they can't decide... If I come across a beautiful piece of land, Jay, in the world, and it's like, wow, and this perfect climate for me, I love it. Why shouldn't I have the right to say, well, nobody else is taking this land, you know. I'll, uh, I'd like to just set up a little thing here if that's all right. You know, maybe spend two years here, maybe spend five, who knows. Maybe I'll die here, who cares, right. But as long as you've got these people who believe in all these borders or believe in all the illusions that they've put up in front of us, and, and you've got to start looking at it as everything's an illusion. Nothing's real. You know, borders aren't real. Flags aren't real. Um, this is all make-believe, fairy tale, Disney World shit, right? And we've all sucked it all in and just we've, we've, we've gone so far away from being a man, a woman, just by picking up each and every single little label that we do, whether it's I'm British, whether it's I'm, you know, a religion, I'm black, white, blue, I'm... And all these, every single one of those little labels that you're picking up as you go along is just chaining you further down and making you, so you'll never become spiritual. You'll never really understand why you was here. You'll never understand what mankind's really about. There'll be, you know, it, it, and it's a shame. And, and I think that's why I get frustrated so much and why I started doing videos, why I started doing anything at all is the frustration of just going, look, <laughs> it's really not that hard, people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it ain't that hard. It ain't that hard. Listen, um, everybody who's listening, if you've just joined us or watching us, even in color with green screens and all sorts of stuff, you're listening to Raconteur's News on uh, this Monday night. Our guest is uh, Shield Destroyer, aka Mark. We'll just call him that for now, I think. Um, Aid is with me, of course. Um, don't forget, well, don't forget, I, I've not even told you yet, but tomorrow night. Owen Lloyd Martin's going to be on. We're going to be chatting with Owen Lloyd Mark Martin. We're going to talk. Be talking about. Um, I think one of the things I want to talk to him about is, is his coping mechanisms. You know, when he's out there in Portugal and he gets quite lonely. But um, we'll talk about one or two things with Owen Lloyd Martin. That's going to be tomorrow night. So, Chuffy, uh, <coughs> you know, I've got a bit wheezy then for no chuffing reason. I think I'm getting out of breath because I'm, you know, I'm not doing enough running. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, um, somebody wanted to know. Someone in the chat room wanted to know about Nick Griffin. What, what's happened to him? Where is he? What's he doing? And uh, what, what's your take on him? <clears throat> well, I think like the, the 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 BMP kind of sunk, didn't it, down to nothing. Um, yeah. And I think he's just gone his own way now. I don't know. I haven't really looked into uh, Nick Griffin for a long time. Um. So. Whether or not he'll come back, or whether you know they get they've got this Mark Collette who was the youth leader of the BMP, haven't they? That's just suddenly appeared. Um, and I, you know, I've been in this game for 
too many years and i'd never come across this guy's name and all of a sudden he comes up and he's got ninety five thousand subscribers on youtube and i'm going what <laughs> mm -hmm. and it was only when i see that um he was having a conversation with that uh godtard you know what i mean they they were and it was all like all the all the right were all going yeah there's going to be this so all the right were coming to watch this conversation and then you saw that it was like oh mark collett's against tommy robinson and and goddard but goddard's like so nice to mark collett and like oh yeah agreeing with everything he says and it, you could just see the game they were playing right and that's what they do they always played punch and judy show like they they, they they control punch and they control Judy and they do it in every and people just people are always gonna want a leader. Yeah, they always want somebody that they can, you know, hail, yeah, you're gonna save us. And they'll never understand that the only people that are gonna save them is themselves. Mm. Yeah, yeah, um I, I was t I would, just let me I just want to get this in, um, Ada, just before because while we're still on BMP and Nick, Nick Griffin. Um, I watched um, a video once a few years ago. I can't. I, it, it must have been. I think it was one night after I'd been in strip club. So what, what, remember when that were, Ada? So that'd yeah, be like. Just, can you just tell everybody that you weren't there for a, a quick bash? That no, you're no. Working in the strip club. Dancing. You are. I was there dancing. I was <laughs> down a dancer. I was the. Uh, I was the alternative dancer. No, so. You yeah, you weren't just sat in the corner cracking one off. You were actually working. No, I wasn't sat in the corner playing with me pole. I was on the pole okay. whenever I could be. But anyway, um, I watched um, a video, a BMP video, and it was about, it was somebody had, had took it at a BMP meeting. Now, one of the things that struck me was they were bringing up all the things that we were talking about around about that time. You know, the... Um, uh the the money um the, the money system and how it was created and that talking about fractional reserve banking and all this sort of stuff you know so um and if anybody wants to have a go at me for watching a bmp yeah i have to watch both sides i'm a reporter i'm a journalist a real journalist so uh yes i um i, I did watch i did watch it so uh, do you think that they were destroyed because because of the the um, fascist or whatever what people perceived of them um or because they weren't they banned at one point i think they were banned weren't they Is I, it... I, think, I think what they've done jason is the bmp really just all of them were led to tommy right follow him for now we'll just sit in the background we'll sort of go under and then we'll reunite at the other end of Tommy, right? As Tommy goes down, we'll now bring back the nationalists. We'll give all these Tommy fans a place to go, right? So, so, so Nick Griffin were like the opening act. He might you know, do. Yeah, he might do. It, 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 it's all they, they, You know what they do. First of all, they they put the messages out there. They look for our reaction, right? And then they'll play based on. On our reaction whichever one they've got set up right if they, and they, they'll already have probably every reaction we can possibly do to to the news they give us so they've already got their setups right if this if this reaction goes we're sending in you know it's, it's probably based like that but it's just the the you know i think the whole the whole point is people have got to stop participating in it uh stop funding it um stop sending their kids to school to be indoctrinated you know start going back to wanting less of the shit that they're given like all this technology bollocks the latest car you know and all that bullshit and start to try to get back to to, to nature as quickly as they can and start to you know um and, and it's like, not sorry, very easy, is it? Not very, we've got addictive technology. Um, Dennis put a, um, a question in the chat room saying, "Is the BMP still going?" Aid. I've just now the thing down. I was going to bring that one up as well. Yeah. Is is that he thought that you were the best person to ask? <laughs> 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 so what? Aid. Fucking going? Um, listen, what I know about the bit. Listen, just to be perfectly clear, politics and political parties of any description only exist between your ears. It is not real. So when we're talking about political parties, I'm not talking about my views. I'm talking about the different views that different people have who end up coming to the fore and trying to get people to follow them. 
like Nick Griffin. Uh, my easy answer to is BMP still going? I ain't got a fucking clue. I guess so. Um, Mark, do you know? Um, I think from what I only looked uh, a little while ago, and uh, they were they were kind of retired because I think the last. The, the one after Nick Griffin was some geezer who would uh, chase some kids over, like two 10 year old kids on BMXs. Mm. Um, I think he's an ex policeman or something. I can't remember. Like, don't quote me on that bit. But he chased two little kids in his Land Rover, like, fucking scared the shit out of them. I think he punctured their tires, done some real nasty shit. And I think he had a gun or something. That was something mm. like that. Go and have a look at the story. Uh, you know, it's it's hard when you when you have so many different things you look at you, you you forget some of some of the other bits so there's a story with the last leader of the bmp yeah uh, uh, it's, not, it's not it's not a very good one um so he's he's gone down so the bmp's kind of gone they, they just haven't given it a leader it's just sat there with nothing you know it's, so you can say it's gone, gone. down gone. Whether it's come back up with mark collette yet i haven't really checked well, that would be my guess who's going to revive it or, or, you know, he's been. Do, do you remember when they had Nick Griffin on Question Time a few years ago? No. What? Do Is you remember when they had Nick Griffin on Question oh, Time? Okay, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Cool. Right. Well, when I, I used to sell uh, loudspeakers, etc., to anybody who'd buy them. No, anything from... Going into a, I don't know, Weatherspoons right up to putting you two on tour. One of the really nice guys that I dealt with lived in Luton. And one of the contracts that he had, he did the sound in the studio, or, well, I say studio, it's often a town hall, when they travel with Question Time. So if Question Time was going to be in Glasgow, he'd be in his van with his speakers and his microphones, and da-da-da-da-da, and he would actually do the sound in the room. The sound that the BBC took down a mixing desk to put out down a TV channel was obviously different. So you got two lots of sound equipment in the same room, to, one doing the job actually in the room, the other one doing the job for the TV. And I remember um, speaking to him, you know, the night when they got Nick Griffin on um, Question Time, and it was all over the press, and it was going to be this, and it was going to be that, and what was he going to say, and was he going to be controversial? They'd got police there ready to arrest him, and all the rest of it. And I remember sending my mate a text, and said, you know, I don't, I don't know what was going on. And it was all recorded the night before. So when you actually looked at the BBC, it was as if it was going to be live tonight, and we're not sure what Nick Griffin's going to say. The whole fucking thing was already canned and edited and ready to put out as if it was going to be live. And it wasn't even fucking live. Yeah, which just proves to you that they're all actors. They've yeah, already got exactly their lines. So. Yeah, exactly. And that was well before um, Jason had given me the kick up the ass to think like I do. I knew nothing then. Nothing yeah. at all. I, I just thought the world was rosy and political parties were real and the Queen really was. And, you know, I still thought all that shit then. Um, yeah. So yeah, um I thought you still thought the earth were round then, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I've got a couple of other notes that I've written down here, but I just want to I want to I want to really get Mark back to young Mr. Tommy Robinson because the stuff that you definitely know living in Luton that we don't and that's what I want to get out of here because I I believe that when all the BMP stuff kind of fell apart because you're right, they put Nick Griffin on telly and then realised he was actually even more of a dickhead than he looked. And all that kind of fell apart. So they needed somebody else. And certainly I'd not heard of Tommy Robinson's name or whatever his real name is um, until well after Nick Griffin had kind of left the scene. But Mark, you probably had. You were probably well aware of Tommy Robinson while Nick Griffin and that was still... Um, Headline name, if you like. I, I don't know. I don't know that I did. <clears throat> like, I didn't know. It wasn't like I'd really known of Tommy Robinson uh, at that point. It was. 
I'd seen him, like, you know, you'd seen him, like, I'd, I'd done a, a party in Luton. Um, I was at a party and he was there. There was, like, a big, you know, a big party. But um, I didn't I didn't know him, know him. But as soon as you start to get the mainstream media press, of course, then people you know who did know him start to say, oh, yeah, I went to school. I, yeah, and it, it, so then you start to get more and more information, right? um and and i'm you know i've got friends from all religions in Luton, pretty much all uh all ethnicities right so i'm not i'm not one of these who aren't aren't getting different versions of same events type of thing yeah mm -hmm. but some people are yeah he's all right because they get their gear from him right or whereas a, a a muslim guy again you know i don't i don't think tommy's personally racist funny enough not not in the way that uh that most people would would assume he is he, he certainly you know he's he's racist as in the way of uh a zionist is where they hate everybody and it's all about them and that's just obviously a very very minuscule amount of the world um but they hate everyone you know <laughs> it doesn't matter look what they've done to the germans right but um so so to me it's but but in in Luton, you know you know you know for a fact what his sunbed shop was. Everyone in Luton knows that, right? Um, that's 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 a common like if if you come to Luton and spoke to five people, and you could find somebody, you know, out, out of those five people, especially if they're Lutonians since since birth, um, they're going to know what Tommy Robinson's uh, sunbed shop was all about, right? Go on then, tell us what it was. Go on. Tell it, was a, it was a fun for the old snort, yeah. Okay. So, and and I know people who um, who know his ex partner still and all that, yeah. So it's not, it, you know, it's not something that's. Again, you can say everything's hearsay, can't you? Uh, hmm. But whether or not you want to get the hearsay from the newspapers, you want to get the hearsay from somebody in Australia, or you want to get the hearsay from the town that you know the the guys from it's it's which one you think's more likable or, or which one's more reasonable but in, in fairness now it doesn't matter because tommy's own crew now is you know they're they're literally putting him down to ensure they don't discredit themselves so they're doing the work now he's 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 a done and dusted one now it'll be you know well for me i'm i'm getting the fuck out i'm not going to sit here like trying to do all their new their new infiltrators now <laughs> people if people ain't worked it out for themselves like tommy robinson should be the person who exposes the whole system because you can see with lee mcmillan his uh ex white hand man right who got um arrested 2013 in september the 27th and then tommy exits the edl two weeks later just as they tell lee mcmillan yeah you're getting charged for the crime um and then in february 2014 he gets 17 years for child abuse on a 10 year old little girl that he'd uh, drugged given cigarettes to done all the things that they report the the uh the grooming gangs are doing right to a 10 year old girl that went on for a year there was a uh, another 14 year old that was raped i think uh there was allegation one one that got dropped but he got 17 years right and then the press change of dates and they say he got uh convicted 2016 rather than 2014 yet they say they published it in 2018 rather than 2014. so first of all you got to say well why are the press running this story in 2018 if it happened in 2016 like they say in the report it does right mm. so you should expose how the press the government because the mef funded his go uh free tommy campaign and they, the mef middle east forum it links directly to the usa and the uk government so straight away this, this he should be the person right now that's absolutely blowing the system out of the water and go, making everyone go wow tommy is the key to breaking down the whole of the system in reality because through him you can see he worked the government worked with him he worked for the government yeah he he the press worked for him he worked for the press yeah and all these people are oh, the press don't like him what <laughs> you know they're giving him major headlines constantly right um 
it, it, it's just it's beyond me how people can't start to see through all this bullshit now and go fucking hell actually everything is literally a lie like everything in the system's corrupt isn't it and a fraud so what when when he went to prison do you think that was the establishment saying listen you might think you're in charge you gobble little shit but we are or do you think that he was sent to prison just to make sure that they could send um Oh God! What's the uh, ex East Enders dickhead that does the? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Grant Mitchell. Grant, yeah. Who, what you? What, I can't yeah, remember his fucking name. Forget. You got. You got to remember. You're believing. Like again, where where do you hear he went to prison? Right? You say, well, the newspaper. So the mainstream media. Again, you believe in the story, right? And you go, well, the Crown Prosecution Service. They wouldn't. Who owns the Crown Prosecution Service? Right? The Royals. Right? Who owns the media? All that. It's all the same people. Right? It's, so you've got an actor who who's playing a part who you think's gone to prison. He come out when he done that longer term, he come out with a nice suntan and thirty thousand pounds worth of veneers. Yeah, and that wasn't that wasn't a a, a a a a guess or you know, that was a fact. He walked out, he went in there, go and have a look at I put on some of my videos of him, I've perfectly perfect uh, purposely picked pictures that show his teeth so you can see what they were like before and you can see he's now got the thirty thousand pound veneers in right um big so pictures yeah, it's like it's like the false flags right it's like the false flag events like when he's getting if you watch that closely when he's getting arrested it's all theater the police are actors yeah he's not really getting arrested like it, you can see he's waiting the whole point of him out there you can see he's waiting for the moment for the police it's all pre-hit rehearsed. He's just an actor that he never went to prison. They do the they do the uh, the BBC show to convince you further that he's in prison, but mainly to give him more, um, more, more again mainstream media attention. Right? Oh, what's his name? Grant Mitchell from EastEnders is coming back. Oh, I gotta watch that tonight. I don't know, Tommy. Oh, that poor Tommy Robinson's in that prison for what? Freedom of speech. <laughs> it's like what? He's like, come on, work it out. <laughs> do, do, do you think he was? Do, do you think he started off like that, or do you think in the early days he was just like, no, no, I want to do this, I want to do that. You know, I am going to do the BMP, uh, not BMP. The um... there's a, there's going to be two reasons how Tommy Robinson got involved in this, right? A, he was born in Cyprus, right? His mum from Ireland and his stepdad's from Ireland, right? Um, but we don't know who his dad is. So being Cyprus so close to Israel could be, you know, who knows, right? So he could have already been being brought up to play this part. And it was, you know, they, they run the drug. So give him a job, you know, as a top drug man. Yeah. Or B, he entered the BMP and the Migs. And the Migs was uh, Luton Town's like football um, hooligans. Yeah. Mm. Like you know, Millwalls or whatever. So they were called the Migs, men in gear, right? um so he, he's joined the migs he's he's joined uh the bmp now he could have got involved into the drugs from there but more than likely he's joined those two as a drug dealer because both of those two types of groups are going to be great for customers right especially if the snorty courty right you know any any type of drug pretty much those two groups you're going to get a lot of customers but besides that, you're also going to get a lot of mates that will beat people up for nothing, right? You're, they'll do nasty shit to people. Um, so that's great for somebody who's dealing drugs as well, isn't it? To get get into a gang, get made and pay them some money to 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 be your back, right? Um, so so it could be a couple of reasons. And then he's got offered this because the Zions can see, look, this guy's doing all that. And more more than likely, he's been uh, he's been arrested. He's got some big drug charge over him. And, right, you do this for us and we'll, you know, work for us or do 10 years or whatever, right? It, it could be a multitude of, uh, of but may, probably the latter is, I would guess. Yeah. And I'll base that on him. Uh, I'd probably base that on Avi Yemeni doing a video to the Jews um, telling everyone how we how Tommy Robinson went through the Zionist inauguration in Tel Aviv, 
um, which tells me he, in theory, if he brought up to be it. He would have probably already been that Zion inauguration when he's four years old or something, right? Mm. Yeah, it's um. Did, did you know him by his real name then, or? No, no, no. I never. I never. I don't. I don't claim to know him. Know him, like right. you know. He wasn't. He wasn't my pal. I wasn't someone I hung around with. He's a few years younger than me. He went. You know. I know people he went to school with. That I know people that know him that have no reason, you know, it's not like they knew that I was a Tommy when they're telling me the shit that they knew about him, right? Um, I know people who still know, like I say, so so again, it's it's everything you say, I mean, but whatever you say is uh, really hearsay. Yeah. Unless you're there, right? But it's whether or not you're going to take the hearsay from, you know, the press, you're going to take it from some far right who lives in Scotland or you're going to take it from me right um but that's your choice but i think clear as day now you know i've been saying it for since since the beginning of the edl and finally it looks like he's getting to a place where he's going down but he can't get back up and when people you say to me oh he's done for in 2013 and 2015 and i'll say no you, you know he's not he's down but you fucking don't let him get back up and sure enough he fucking rose and they'd say oh he doesn't matter he's not important yes he fucking is important <laughs> so w w when he kind of goes down do you think the, do, do you think there'll be this huge thing of oh he's gone down you know nobody's going to hear from him again or do you think he'll just quietly disappear into the sunset i think i think he's already quietly disappearing you know again it depends on on how deep he is in or how much they because more than likely they're going to dump him if he's not really one of them even if he went for an inauguration they'll probably just dump him right they'll leave him to squalor well, yeah, like as an example if you look at epstein he got fucking dumped but um what's her name um thingy maxwell you know she she's been well looked after isn't she so it depends yeah. how far up the ladder you are, doesn't it, really? Yeah, yeah. like Epstein, he, if, if he was truly a billionaire and he wasn't um, just most of his assets were owned by the Rothschilds and he mm. was giving the impression he was a billionaire and he was a true one, then clear enough, he ain't going down for shit. You know, he's going to quickly go through the court cases, make the people who, the families who, who believe that he's now dead Mm. And then they're gonna, yeah, off you go, you know. And that, with facial recognition, he's probably still back in his own home, you know what I mean? As a new owner, you know? <laughs> yeah. fucking, they've probably done some facial shit to him, changed his whole so you wouldn't even recognize him now. Mm. Um, or he's in Tel Aviv, of course, but it, yeah, yeah. I mean, with someone like Tommy Robinson, more than likely, he's just he's just bought into the whole I'm gonna be rich, I'm gonna have fame, fortune. And this is all I care about. And now I'm not going to get done for dealing drugs anymore. And now he's fallen because of his drug habit, probably. He's, you know, he's given himself away too often now. Um, that they'll they, like the him. they might take him out themselves, you know. That's, you know, if he becomes too much where he could start giving the game away and explaining, look, I work for the government. <laughs> So you say it's no wonder these guys always become paranoid because they're not really paranoid about everyone finding them out. They're more paranoid about the people who are employing them, you know, mm. when they're going to decide, actually, we don't need you anymore. Yeah, and, and when you've got um, the BBC, which is basically the government's mouthpiece, um, doing the government's bidding... Um, and, and nothing more ever. And then you've got people saying, oh, well, you know, if we don't have to pay for our telly license anymore, we shouldn't be having to do that. Well, you haven't anyway, but, well, yeah, there's a few people now not paying telly license because they think it's not fair. So now they're doing all this um, um, stuff about, oh, well, shall we scrap the TV license? And all they're doing, they're fishing for what the public will put up with, knowing damn well that the BBC's got, is it another six years or whatever? Left on the charter, yeah. Um, it's, so it's, all they're doing, they're just they're just fishing for for what? How much more shit will all of us fucking idiots put up with? Yeah, and when and when you think about it, right? They 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 do shit like that just to maybe give people like as people are getting poorer and poorer, right? 
they go, oh, oh, wouldn't it be great if they got rid of that TV license? I wouldn't have to pay that £13 a month anymore. That would be good. I could, and, and they're all happy, right? And then they love that person because they're suggesting it. Oh, look, Boris Johnson suggesting that. I knew he was going to be great. Oh, I knew. I knew he was going to be great, that one. <laughs> It's like fucking honestly it's like it's it's honestly like as as i always say right it's the biggest thing i probably say in any of my videos it's children in adults bodies is the world we're living in because we haven't been educated you know and, and we've all been guilty of it we all probably still are guilty of it to an extreme but it's it's such an extreme where you can't you know you, you know what it's like trying to have an adult conversation with an adult today about what's going on in the real world right you get the child come back, ah, ah, you get the screams, you get like the perpetual and, and and with what I do, of course, when I'm out in everybody, it doesn't, everybody ends up hating me because pretty much 90% of the people out on YouTube, on Facebook are working for the, for the elites, you know? And so you end up out in a mall and people hate, you know, everyone's got their teddy bear. Every child's got their teddy bear. They don't want to let go of them. So I just get, I'm the one who gets hated for outing them, which, is you 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 kind of become um it, it doesn't hit you as hard as it might you know you see a lot of people getting really wound up in comments because you've done this for 10 years with tommy robinson's crew right so you're quite you, you got quite armored to the shit they call you and the shit they say but it just it, it amazes me and you kind of like think fuck are these people worth it are they worth saving maybe they're fucking elite have got a fucking maybe they're going fuck you know this Mark's trying to save them, but he don't realise they're fucking all nuts, mate. <laughs> we're, we're doing it for the children. We're doing it, yeah, exactly. I know. Well, we're, we're doing it for the children. I, I, I kind of think we are. You know, I kind of feel that even the elite themselves, you know, even the even the ones right at the top are victims, you know, because you think about it, they've been indoctrinated harsh to to to, to do this shit since. And I know, you know they come across as toffs and they don't give a shit and they don't give a shit, but they, they, they've been pulled away further than anyone from spirituality, right? They've been like dragged from birth completely into the, the hands of the, uh, the evil side. And so even they, uh, and, and when, when you hear things like, you know, you know me, I'm not religious, right? So I don't want those people to start giving me labels and shit for what I say. But when you hear things like, uh, God says, forgive all, yeah and i kind of figure that maybe he's saying look the only way you is you've got to realize everybody's a victim to this shit so you can't you know though you can't it's you know i know it's fucking hard you can't like but hopefully you can help right <laughs> i don't know but you, yeah it's like you don't want to go up to somebody and say look you're a fucking idiot well when 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 you look at the shit that people have done and you know you just look at even though i say just but when you see a paedophile is very fucking. I mean, I, I can't imagine that on the straight and narrow I'd ever forgive a paedophile, right? I think, fuck you, dirty motherfucker. But these fuckers have done fucking like disgusting. I mean, a paedophile is fucking disgusting, but these fuckers have done like a thousand times more disgusting shit than that, right? If it's possible to do a thousand times more shit than that. But they're still victim, you know, if, they, if they've been brought into the world with, with the right people that we're going to teach them the, the the good shit and take them down a good road would they have ever done any of this shit right that's that's what i'm saying i'm not saying that you know i forgive them like i kind of like feel like i should in the if i was religious i probably where, would. Where does that stop yeah. though where does that stop where's the point where you go right because now you're talking about the fucking you're talking about uh talking in terms of victims for the people that are right at the very top that are doing this stuff i mean i think i think if oh. say, say we had a say we had a switch to my jason right where the whole world has suddenly gone right we're changing what we're doing here we're not going to fucking be these murdering scumbag arsehole you know hating because we kill the world we, we, we never think about any other animal yeah because they can't speak we just always think about ourselves right so maybe you know if, if humanity actually decided let's turn this world into what you know rather than wait to die to go to heaven why don't we live in heaven yeah and start to think about how we can make this place much more heavenly because we we are pretty smart when we get when we when we want to be aren't we but um yeah we're really we're killing people, people aren't we really we, we we but the majority of people don't 
don't grow up wanting to kill people right they don't grow up wanting to fucking like most people still don't even though they eat meat they don't want to actually kill the animal right and would find it hard to do so so in our in our natural ability here we we're really not as fucking bad but when we're indoctrinated to believe that our whole life is about getting money and getting things with that money and bigger things and never being happy with what we've got yeah and just wanting more and more and we and, and then and then you need the money so even if you don't want all the things you've still got to get a shitload of money just to survive and live you know just mm. to survive in your you, you just take man away from everything that becomes natural and, and of course we could have a, a fucking beautiful place we could share with the resources we could lose the monetary system and, and we could make it fucking amazing but unfortunately we use technology for weapons and and spying and mind control we don't use it for for our gain and and, I, and that's why i think over the time i i reckon there's been a point in history uh, probably more than once where they've completely just destroyed all technology because it's they've seen how it's ruined humanity and maybe that's the sort of thing that happens maybe every 400 years 500 years we go through this time where we get to the point where we've got too smart for our own good and we either you know we either get wiped out to an extent and rebuild or we uh fight back and get rid of all our shit and start facing up to to what we're doing and how we're doing it completely wrong and when you look at how many people are religious in the world and believing in heaven and god you think is this really what you think god put you on it to do <laughs> well more people go to ikea on a sunday apparently than go to any church yeah well i mean that that's the thing but they'll all say they you know they'll all pretend that they're 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 religious but None of them, very rarely do I come across a religious person. Like I say, if I really believed that there was a hell when I was going to go to it through my religion, yeah, oh, you better be shit to shit. I'd be doing exactly what that fucking book said. <laughs> yeah, I'll fucking when we sleep, it, it seems I'd fucking slipped. I'd be like not sleeping at night for the rest of my fucking life. Yeah, but Mark, what you're forgetting is Jesus loves you. <laughs> yeah fucking hell and 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 in my opinion if i if i believe and i i you know i haven't said there's not a god so i'm not taking anyone's god away from them but of course god's just a word so whatever you want to call it but if personally i would call god grandma because i reckon first of all there's probably got to be a female to have if we're all their children right so it's probably got to be a female then if you look at like um heaven and hell maybe she had uh she decided the best company she could do was to give herself children and that's what she done so she made the ovaries and made herself a female so she give herself children and that's like uh the devil and the good one and the devil's not really bad but he's gonna fucking if you're an arsehole he's gonna make sure you get your fucking shit for being an arsehole right because god mark the grandma would never have the grandchild and go you've got to go to the fire so she's got to have her child you know but that's that's my own thinking yeah that's not from a book and and if, if you wrote that in a book here yeah, someone would turn it into a cult and everyone be going fucking mental over it saying this is true <laughs> do you think uh, do you think god like you know he goes to like god meetings you know where all gods meet up because there's fucking hundreds or three thousand i think so he goes to like fucking god meeting and they're all there and they're all oh i've seen you for a bit yeah and uh, <laughs> And then one, and then one going, what's he? And then he goes, what the fuck's that? And he said, uh, that's, uh, that's that's fucking that's so so and so God. Wait, hang on a minute. How come I ain't got fucking two wives? Why can't <laughs> I have fucking two wives? Fucking hell, fire! Uh, I fucking beat wrong one dinner, and that's why now he's angry, and that's why he's doing this to us. <laughs> have you know, they've all they've all got a dis they've all got twelve disciples. Um, apparently, in, I've not read it, but apparently in the Quran and one of the um, Jesus is in there. Um, you know, and yeah, Jesus is a prophet in uh, yeah. in the Quran. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, and whatever anybody wants to be involved in believing or whatever is completely up to them. Um. Maybe there's a God, maybe there isn't. I don't know. But 
let it be your god and not one that you fucking follow. You know, just just got to be your god. Yeah, sorry. I just I just saw the message about uh, Tommy exposed grooming gangs. I yeah, I put that in the private thing, and I'm I'm still lingering over it because I want Mark. Please read that out and then tell us what you think. Yeah, well, but let's see. Right, so they put Tommy exposed to grooming gangs in Rotherham, so the police didn't like him, and they ganged up on him. <laughs> Try to keep him quiet. This guy doesn't give Tommy any credit what he deserves. Right? Well, let's okay. just point out that it wasn't him that did the grooming gangs. It was the, among others, it was the uh, reporter from the Times originally. But anyway, crack on. Yeah, yeah. And also, y y you're not exposing a grooming gang when you're reporting it against court rules early, are you? Because it's already been exposed because that's why it's in court. Yes, yeah, exactly. It was, it was public. It, yeah, it was... Right. Um, so, it's so the the that information wasn't it tommy never exposed anything so whoever said that sorry you're very wrong yeah um there was no exposing by tommy on anything uh tommy was playing against you know the press stories for his own agenda to keep his crew and build his crew so you'd all point at um muslim pakistanis as a problem and you'd never look at the problem and and, and you'd only look at one part of the problem um, which was paedophilia and you'd only look at one minority a very small minority of the country to blame for all your other problems that are going on right mm -hmm. uh, which exactly what all why i call them the lowest iqs because that's exactly what they did and they're still doing some of them obviously um but yeah he, he never exposed nothing and if you can't see the game and you're still in that right left wing um mentality you're never going to grow up and you're not going to save your family you're not going to save yourself you probably don't really care to you want a gang you like to go out on a saturday down to trafalgar square have a good few beers with lads because you can't do that in a football gang anymore right yeah yeah it's that it's the only reason people will stay and 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 defend that system now you know i can't i can't be more clear on you know, if people want to ignore that, then they're either working and get working for the the, but but even the elite are working against him now. So, you know, I, this guy's obviously just a confused guy. If you spoke to Mr. General Public, they would probably be of the opinion that because um, they don't read the Times, that it was Tommy Robinson that exposed this, and it was Tommy Robinson that exposed that, and that, and 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 if you said. Pakistani grooming gang or whatever, and any, anything relating to that. Muslim grooming gang. Yeah, m most um, people immediately would go, mm -mm, Tommy Robinson, that name would be in there. Um, and that's exactly what the system's designed to do. Yeah. So that it's not the, the system that's ever in question. It's not the principle that's ever in question. It's not how far they can push the agenda that's ever in question. It's one man that they can push forward, and once they've done with him, they throw him away and get the next one. Yeah, and 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 Tommy started obviously. He would start with Quran verses and never give them any context, right? So that's really he'd convince everybody that the Quran said something, right? Mm. So now you're using uh, children, yeah? You're, you're going on people's heartstrings, yeah? And not only is he saying it's children, now he's really going on the heartstrings of those people who are a little bit racist. You know, they, they'd never call themselves racist because they got a mate called, you know, Abdul down the road. But um, but now, now he's talking about white girls, yeah? It's not just children now. Oh, they're touching our white girls and white boys. Yeah, it's it's the white British. Um, so, so it's all about, you know, just little little things like that start and you, you start to build up that, you know, with those certain types of minds, you start to build up that anger, that hate. They're already, you know, they're reading headlines and they're walking around uh, uh, and, and they see a Muslim man with his child and straight away they're looking at him like, I bet you he's abusing that child because it's his teachings and all that. And uh, and when they call them Muslims, you know, it's, it, it, if, you're, if you really was, and, I, you know, I'd, I've done enough research on enough religions to know them enough to know what they're about, right? There's nothing in the Quran that says anything like Tommy Robinson says. 
uh, certainly not without context. The things he puts, like you can, you you got to kill, you can kill the uh, non-believers, right? Um, he, he forgets to mention that it's during a time of war, whilst you're being attacked. Not even just during a time of war, you've got to be attacked before you're allowed to kill a non-believer, right? So it's it's, and and, and a lot of it. So it's it's madness that people just they listen to somebody, they think, oh, he's all right, yeah, yeah, I know it's fucking those ones down my road they got a nice beamer than me and oh they, there's always like four or five of them and i'm always on my own when i walk past them and i feel a little bit like tense when i walk past them yeah it's their fault you know what i mean that's the sort of mentality that the the people are that these types of stories will hit and they and all of a sudden they'll start buying into it and they'll start hating more and then of course they'll be introduced to the coca-cola on the saturday down trafalgar square and 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 more and more aggressiveness will come out of a uh, more and more hate and then they're in the cult right and then there's no getting them out um you know but i think i've got enough you know i think i've got enough out in my time to say right you know but unfortunately there's more that i've sat and tried to get out that would ever want to listen because again it's that teddy bear isn't it? tommy's a teddy bear oh you leave my teddy bear alone don't take him away yeah <laughs> I want to pull pull from that a couple of things out of the chat room. Uh, Dave Stanley, most paedophiles are white. Um, well, they're probably not in Africa. How, how does how does he know so much about paedophiles? That's what I want to know. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think it's just a crazy thing. It's it's a crazy thing to say most paedophiles or anything because if we knew what most paedophiles were, that hopefully we'd have them all strung up and they'd all be fucking off our streets, right? But yeah. Unfortunately, child, it, it, it's such a common occurrence now. I would never send my children to school just for that fact, right? They wouldn't be fucking hardly out my sight as they were children. Um, but just for that fact would be enough for me not to send them to school. Uh, mm. So you can do it for the safety of your kids if you're not going to do it for the welfare of their minds. Um, but it, it's 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 crazy for people to start pointing at fingers at minorities colors races you know the the fact is we've got a big problem because it's it's becoming normal normalized we know where the 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 stream of it starts at, but we want to go we want to go for the smaller men first and then pick the larger ones later and you know you're already you're already um planning to fail aren't you when you when you go that way into it so as long as people want to not point at you know and keep voting in their governments keep funding the people who are responsible for all of this you know you can't help them can you and you'll get a lot of arguments you know the, the smart people will tell you oh no vote is no say and all that sort of shit but phew, good luck oh, you know i would i would gonna i would i would gonna say a pedophile you do a pedophile joke but i don't think i'll do it <laughs> i don't think i'll do it <laughs> no uh um, in fact, I fuck just it, I will. out the chat room as well. The, the what? Sorry, just what, another one that I just want to pull out the chat room if I can. Yeah, go on. Um, just something I wrote down when you were talking about different religion. I wrote down King King James Bible. I remember when they had a um, all the Bibles in these schools were taken out and replaced by a King James Bible, and apparently schools in the in England. I don't know about Scotland. Wales or Ireland or whatever, but apparently in England, the only Bible they can have is a King James Bible. Um, and then cake holders put uh, King James Version, translation possibly by Francis Bacon, Freemasons know the hidden truth. Uh, they must allow us access to the truth. Weird code of ethics. It's all kind of in there, isn't it, really? Because if you've got the Old Testament, then they just leave out all the bad shit and just write the New Testament. And then they go, oh, fuck that, we'll not have that anymore. We'll just have the King James Version. Like It's like a dictionary. You know, why do you need to change the meaning of a word? If you're not trying to trick me, why do you need to change the meaning of a word? If you're not trying to trick me, why do you change him what's in a fucking Bible? It's just a, a question. I think, I think that the Bible's clearly been always so much, you know, you could say some of it's true, but which parts are true, right? So you can't you can't decide with the the original Bible anymore. That's for sure. So I think uh, 
religion in itself to me is is written by man so it's probably yeah. again it's it's times like now yeah where people start to write out or or beginning of new times or or you know but it's times like now where people are like fuck this is what's going on maybe if we get people back into and maybe the books are there to get them to try and get them back into spirituality right but the problem with with god is it's not it's not god belief that's a problem it's religion that's the problem when you start to name what you hope for after you die based on whether it's mythological based on your own mind whatever it is as soon as you start to to name that and then more and more people you know why can't you because even even most religious people don't have all the same ideas even about their own religion right so they're mm. not really all all that religion or that religion um of course some of them are far more dedicated to it than others uh but it's like as soon as you as soon as you start to give yourself another label you've you've stopped thinking right you've kind of like well i've decided on that and that's it there's no more thought whereas something like god and the afterlife and what happens to you when you die really is even even with the religion i'd imagine they're always trying to thinking about it sometimes like right? going well maybe when i die this happens or that happens yeah. what you would know? jesus do yeah yeah but why people want to make fact out of uh hearsay you know just complete hearsay where there's no there's no link to the person who originally said it really right i know even in in uh muslims they say they've got a link the family link all the way back to uh to Muhammad but again you know it doesn't mean Muhammad was sent by God it means that Muhammad might have just been a smart guy going fuck look at the state of this place there's too much alcoholism here everyone's getting drunk on this shit they're all fucking killing each other raping they don't care what can I do to stop it and maybe he got together with a fucking 10 guys who had really great minds and they managed to write his book and and he was marketing it you know something mm. like that I don't know but same with Jesus who knows but I don't like to guess, right? But I dare say they were great men, whichever way. But probably all the prophets were great men, right? Um, but it's just a shame that people have to take it to that next extent where they've got to argue and, and they live their whole lives by it rather than saying, why don't I just be fucking really good, as good as I can, try and help as much as I can with life, you know? If I see a little fucking animal dying on the road, I'll try and save it if I fucking see an old lady crossing the road and she's struggling i'll help her and and try and be the better person i can be rather than just fucking stick to this shit where i know in a lot of these places they're fucking touching children the ones who are supposed to be the most holiest right um so why 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 don't i get the fuck out of this shit and just think for myself and go back to man i'm a man and well today i think this tomorrow i might think that you know that's what i do like tomorrow i might think fucking uh god is a fucking bicycle do you know what i mean i used to get <laughs> accused of being um religious i was in a uh <laughs> I, I was in a soul band like the like the commitments anybody who's seen the commitments film i was in a soul band like that and i was just i joined them they were already a group i didn't form anything uh, they were from leicester and they were called the revelations which apparently is the first book of the Old Testament, is it? Is it the first one? No. No, Genesis is the first one. I don't know. Anyway, it's one of them. And so we used to get people ringing up to make bookings for our band, saying, oh, uh, will you come and do our religious festival? And we used to go, what the fuck are you talking about? We're a soul band, and our singer swears a lot. <laughs> Fucking hell. So, yeah, I used to get to uh, get, get that. Um, there was another one I just dug out the chat room, and I've lost it. Uh, well, I've got, I, I, listen, I want, I, I, are you going down this spiritual route or what? Because well, I, I, I wanted to ask him, somebody had put in chat room earlier on, uh, what you thought about Bill Maloney. Oh, yeah. Oh, Bill Maloney. I mean, when, when you look at like uh, Bill Maloney, John, what's his face? The, 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 thing, the thing I'd say to everyone, right, is John just Wedger. don't trust anyone. <laughs> like literally on especially on youtube on facebook and all that because their shields are out in like they you know some of these shields you'll probably have to pay a fucking heroin you know a bit of heroin each week yeah so that they, they, they'll come real cheap they'll sell themselves real cheap others 
might have a grandma on on you know death and they need the the money to pay for her medical bills right so many people have been bought right now that are online yeah if you trust in anyone then you've only got yourself to trust but i personally think you should stop stop participating in the system right try and get yourself out as and i'm not fully out myself right so i'm trying to get out though right i'm trying to get the fuck out of here i'm trying to get the fuck out of britain i, I would you know i don't want to scare people but if you can just get the fuck out and try and find um a safer land right now because i don't think it's safe in britain i don't think it's safe in america canada they've uh there's been some insurance thing that's gone out for you know some huge amount of money for deaths in uh usa canada and australia so it's just little signs you know f fucking tommy robinson um Danny Tomo are both fucking running the country, leaving the country, aren't they? So all their minions are starting to get out. The people who, the people who knows what's going on, are leaving the fucking country, right? So I just think get the fuck out and stop, stop. Don't don't trust anyone. Yeah, go and listen to people. And as soon as they start telling you to vote for someone or um, telling you to go and go and form um, a protest outside London, anything like that, go fucking chill why are they trying to lead us into big groups why are they trying to tell us to follow poly tricksters just stand, uh, at, stand at the gates at the end of downing street shouting, shouting tommy 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 yeah yeah shit like that just uh, stay away from anything that's going to put you into a into a gang which a gang turns into a cult right as soon as you're in that little group and it's all like you're hating on something or someone and you're all together and then you know you're just getting yourself dragged into hate and once you start feeling that hate for something you, it's very hard to get rid of it man and and that's when you start to lose your soul i think i think when you go through life a, a a long period of hate in your life like the tommy robinsons i mean the whole world's going to need a, a massive period of um of what's that stuff where you lay down on a sofa <laughs> oh rest well, uh, like, you know, no, where you lay down and someone talks to you. Oh, therapy. Therapy, yeah. The whole world's yeah. going to need a, a, a fucking rest period just for therapy, yeah, to start mm. to, to, to come to terms with what's happened. If, if, if in fact, it goes our way, right? Um, including, yeah, ev everyone in the world's going to need that therapy and they're all going to be like, fuck. <laughs> now I see, but... There's no, uh, there's no evil. Um, there's no evil. Sorry, I was looking at some. It's... Anyway, there's no, uh, there's no, no bad here. <laughs> there's no. Sorry, there's no leaders here. No leaders. No. no leaders. We don't want you to follow us. But if you want to subscribe to us, please do on YouTube and on Facebook as well. And tonight, if you're watching uh, and and you know if, if you've enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up. If you've not enjoyed it, give us the thumbs down. Um, yes, let's get. To, I, I wanted to get on to. Um, go on, Eddie. Did, did you want to make, bring some up? Apart just, from just when Mark read that question out, um, whoever wrote it, I'm just trying to flick back now. Something Tommy or whatever the, the name was in the chat room. Uh, he's since put um, the. Oh God, I can't find what he's written. Basically, he's off because he doesn't agree with Mark. He thinks that Tommy's he is as he's portrayed on the telly. Um, all I gotta say is, please don't spit your dummy out and chuck your teddy out. Just have a listen, and you might, you know. Well, listen, people. There are there are people don't agree with everybody, and if you don't don't agree with somebody, then by all means, switch us up if you don't want to listen. But at least have a listen, and you know, and just uh, yeah, I've had my mind change loads of times. Take, I mean, just just that when he was talking, when when the guy that was um, watching on Facebook. When he said that um, he wasn't giving Tommy any credit, well, the reason why he weren't giving Tommy any credit because he knows. He, well, sorry, his perspective is that Tommy's an actor. Mm. He's not getting any credit. No, he didn't do any of this. It weren't him that did all the the, the work and all this stuff. It, 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 and you know, and I think somebody put as well. Um, oh, I think it were him as well who put that he was in Belmarsh 
It was definitely in Belmarsh. And uh, again, I suppose you'd say, well, do, where do you get that from? It's from the newspaper. It's from mainstream media or whatever. Or, unless you were actually in Belmarsh, William, you're not really going to, you're not going to know at all, are you, one way or the other? As Mark's just said two or three times, it's where you choose to get your hearsay from. He's right. Because unless I was stood in Belmarsh, I don't know what the truth is. Yeah, if, if, everything's hearsay, really, isn't it? Yeah, Unless you're there, but yeah. it's it's yeah, exactly what you say. It's whether you're going to say that guy in Australia knows better than somebody who's in the same town who knows people who probably knows people that knows him, right? Um, it's it's whether or not. But I think with me now, it, it doesn't matter anymore because, like I say, you can see. I, I'll I'll pin a. I'm going to pin a. Uh, I'm going to show you exactly how they work, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin a story in the thing. And you'll see this guy, right? He, 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 uh, this guy here, what's he called? It's all about nationalism, just like Germany, right? Mm -hmm. And the guy that I talk about here, he, he come over to my, um, my YouTube channel and then he done a video on me saying uh another you you might have seen it i i replayed the video right that um i'm a shill is is shill destroyer indeed the biggest shill of them all <laughs> right and he didn't say anything he didn't say anything in it of why i was a shill right he didn't say anything in it why i was a shill but then you Which look at his, you look at his page is his thing and this guy i recognize his voice and i'm sure a lot of tommy robinson supporters will recognize his voice and he was a big tommy robinson pusher but now he's like anti tommy he's out in him right and guess who he's pushing he's pushing the bmp and mark collett right so i've done a video uh to to literally uh show this like so people can't say oh no you're just <laughs> um but obviously i couldn't put it on youtube because i'm banned so I'll put it on the uh, bit shoot. So what I'll do is I'll link it. So if anyone wants to watch it, they can do. But it's only a couple of minutes. So it's not going to bore the shit out of you forever. But yeah, well, if you send us, if you get us link, we'll we'll pop it in the uh, description below when uh, when 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 this is all over and done with. Oh, cool. uh, let's just say hello to some of the people in the chat room. Uh, Bright seventy seven is in there. Uh, Super leads as usual. Good evening, Super leads. I hope you are feeling uh, awesome. Uh, Iman Pumama, Pudama, Iman Pudama, uh, yeah, uh, yes, yeah. hello to you. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> you <laughs> sorry. So we sometimes miss the na the the gag in the name. Uh, we right, miss well, it somehow because yeah. Is that a gag name? I don't know. Iman Pudama, Iman Pudama. No, nope. not a gag. Listen, if it is your real name, then uh, it's Aidy's fault. So uh, don't have a go. <laughs> and, and by the way, I'd just like to point out, Aid Hardy or Adrian Hardy is my real name. It's the one that's on that bit of paper thingy that I can't use for um, identification purposes because it belongs to the Queen. Because <clears throat> it says on the bottom. Sorry, it was an inside job. Good evening to you. Um, I believe you're um, into the 9 11 stuff. Well, I've got, I've just bu I booked a couple of days ago, I booked uh, Mark Conlon, who's going to be coming on. He's just uh, written a piece on Flight 93. Um, so if you want to find that out, Mark Conlon is written a piece on Flight 93. He's going to be coming on on the 23rd or 24th of, so in a month's time, in a month. So 23rd or 24th of May. At March, fucking May, um, he'll be coming on, and we'll be talking about that flight ninety three. It's, uh, it, but it'll just be me, won't it, Aid? Because you won't be here. You'll be, um, you'll be, uh, you'll be uh, mingling with the lady boys. No, I won't. <laughs> you don't have uh, to say. I'll it, probably be out. Well, what time? I'll probably be out on my mate's boat. Actually. <laughs> oh well. Yeah. Well, at that time. You got a mate in Thailand, yeah, like out of me seven hours ahead in Thailand. <laughs> hey, hey, you do, Mark. You go on, you ask hey, this one. You got, you got a mate over in Thailand, yeah. Got a few, a couple, but one in particular is a really good lad, yeah. 
Uh, you're definitely going to be retiring and going to Thailand then. Well, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and to be honest, and, uh, you know, really, I have got to the point where I just can't take any more of this shit. Yeah, I, yeah, same. I don't want to... I don't want to feel the need to do this. And the reason I I feel the need to do this is for my own therapy. But I really wish that the world is, or was, as it seems, a real place. I don't want it to look like it does, but I want it to be real. And I don't want any of us to think anything other than the world is fluffy and wonderful. and Because that's how it should be. But sadly, it isn't. But I've just got to the point where I just fucking just don't want to know anymore. I just want to piss off. That uh, that name I couldn't pronounce, Eman Budama, you know what it is? It's name backwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the made-up name. Backwards. Yeah. Bollocks. Like I said, we often don't get the gag. because we, we, we are a bit slow, though, aren't we, really? I mean, we well, are it's slow. Backwards, really. And yeah. Mar as well, because he never fucking thought of it either. <laughs> what was that? What did I miss? Round. Ooh, okay, go on. Sorry, go on, uh, Mark. Well, sorry, what did I miss? Uh, oh, the somebody's name. Somebody in the chat room would put their name. Oh, okay. Uh, and I tried to pronounce it, and it was a made-up name backwards. Oh. Uh. <laughs> and I, we said we were a bit thick, but you must have been as well, because you never noticed it. Well, I, I'm not looking at the chat, to be fair. I've got it on the uh, stream yard. So now I've got uh, um, Cardini, this virus might stop you flying to Thailand, Aid. No, I, I can't fly. I need an A380 to do that. Um, and I won't be sitting upstairs. I'll be sitting downstairs. I had a phone call from a friend the other day saying, are you really going to go? Aren't you bothered about breathing the air in the plane? Sharing the air with some... No, really. No, not at all. There's only one thing that's going to stop me going, and that's if they actually cancel the fucking flight. Because um, as we know, I mean, the amount of people who've said to me today, oh, there's two people in Alamshire Hospital have got that coronavirus, you know. I've got to go to Alamshire tomorrow because I'm having my bowels seen too. <laughs> what do you think? I'm in the same fucking building. You should, said, you, did, you, you, you should have said, fuck. You should have looked after your fucking bowels then, shouldn't you? <laughs> Honestly, I've heard a woman actually say that to me today. And another one say that she's got an appointment. Sorry, a bloke say he's got an appointment. And uh, what did I think? Uh, I think you've got an appointment. And if you've got an appointment, you feel the need to go, you should go. If you don't feel the need to go, then don't. But for fuck's sake, why does... Somebody's got a cold... So you're not going to go, really? The panic, right? I just think the guy who was the bus driver who drove them from... Where is it the plane landed? Uh, I want to say Area of Bryce Norton. Is it Bryce Norton they're flying them into? No, it weren't. It were, it were an Air Force base, though. Yeah, um, it's the same one they always use, and I can't remember. It, were, were, no, it, were, it weren't. It weren't. It were just. It were one, but it weren't one that they always use. It weren't that because they use that royal fucking what is yeah. it? That one where they used to like you know paraders dead in front of us and saying fucking yeah, yeah that fucking sick bastard fucking thing. Um, oh God. What, anyway, go on. Yeah, they, they came in. Yeah, and the, the guy's not got a fucking. The guy driving the bus has just got his fucking coat on. <laughs> hasn't he? I mean, I think it, it, that man. Fucking hell, the guy who's just there with his bus driver's fucking white shirt on in his uniform, driving his bus with all these people with the deadly virus and fucking doctors in the full hazmat shit. And he's just there with his glasses on driving his bus. <laughs> <laughs> fucking brilliant. But the big question is, if it was that bad, why did they land them where they did? Why don't they just land them in Liverpool Airport? Why don't they just kill them? And then drive to the Wirral. Because that was the closest bloody airport. Anyway, what do I know? <laughs> so, well, my... everybody in a fucking no, no, this is what I am. Everybody well, who's got it and everyone who's, you know, who's uh, likely to get it, there's no, there's like that, isn't there? They'll say, oh, or, or you're carrying virus or whatever. It's just not got, they'll all be put into a fucking, uh, a big, like, industrial unit 
and then they'll go to the people and say this is the good for everyone else we've got everybody out here now and then they will they'll all stand here on pay-per-view and watch as the fuckers bombed and all the people that are inside perish that's what fucking that's what sort of world we're sort of heading to sort of i keep saying so. we'll be baying for blood kill them kill them they've got the virus kill them yeah, zombies yeah. zombie apocalypse type thing yeah you sneezed you must be a zombie i must you know, you know, the the, 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 now, the, the mainstream media are now encouraging people to hate everybody because you could have the coronavirus and not even know so therefore you've got to be suspicious of everybody even yourself yeah, yeah i'm suspicious of myself It'll be, it'll be a time now where rather than having a big beard and having brown skin will be like scary to walk the streets, it'll be uh Chinese eyes, won't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell, our next door neighbours have got them. So it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really scared. I, I, I you know oh, Bright 77, I don't know where you know, but it's not the no, it's Vanos. 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 Uh, regarding the coronavirus on the BBC, over the last few days, they are hinting, don't worry about the virus. It only affects the old, infirm, etc. Everyone are okay. What a joke. I've not seen that, so uh, I'll take your word for that. It was an inside job. <laughs> did, did, did you know, I, did, the, the fucking BBC are just, it's laughable, isn't it? I'm glad I can't watch it anymore. <laughs> well, not until Thursday anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll only oh. watch it. I, I was laughing at Adrian's um, thing. That coach driver is currently in hospital, suffering from extreme laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Dear me. Yeah. Um, she'll destroy a mark. We've got about nine, eight or nine minutes left if we're going to stick to two hours. Um, the floor is yours. What would you like to say? Um... I don't know. What are we talking about? Um, he's, he's so good at that, isn't he? I mean, you can't just do that. You've got to bring him into something. You know, let's, right, let's, 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 let's go Mark Steele uh, and Lee Garrett because um, tonight I was going to begin the show at the beginning and I was going to put on a dark pair of glasses and I'm going to go, no, oh, this is Mark Steele here. I've stolen from Racketeers News to go over the station. <laughs> if you don't uh, a post 5G, I'm going to stamp on these puppies. <laughs> Fucking thing, fuck, fuck. Cause it, so let's get on to him. And, and also Crane as well, who seems to have turned up again from under whatever fucking caravan he's been sleeping. Fuck, I only ran to Crane once, you know that. I only ran to him, man. You are, sorry? I, I once nearly ran to Crane. Like when I first saw him, like, I had no idea, you know, back in uh, probably, I don't know, 2013, maybe. Right. Um, I thought he was like, you know, obviously I didn't realize he was fucking a shill. And he was uh, at some park bit, you know, doing some, uh, I think, anti fracking or something he was doing. I can't what it was. But he was doing uh, one of his lives. And he went too far away, and I was fucking gonna go run in there and fucking have a good chat with him. We we're gonna be buddies, and I was gonna see what he thought we could do to save the world. But fortunately, I didn't fucking go. <laughs> Unfortunately, Adrian did, didn't you, Adrian? Oh, what? What to his thing in um, Sheffield? He's in talking. Sheffield, yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, he was doing that thing on fracking, wasn't he? But before that, he hung his hat on alien invasions at the uh, Olympics. Yeah, that would that um, would that would be that even got into the sun that. Yeah, it so did. Yeah, that were, it was so fucking real and true. It even got into sun. Mm. <laughs> John Crane is definitely not anti-money. No, he's not. That's very true. <laughs> yeah, he certainly isn't. No, he's not anti-money at all. It remembers Ian Crane from back in Dubai. Not Dubai. Yeah, Dubai wants it. Uh, no, I were in Dubai at the same time as him. Yeah. I don't remember him, but I were in Dubai at the same time as him. Mm. But he, he, he I, comes I, to I'm oil. I'm not sure what his position within the um, oil or gas industry was, but Jason seems to believe it wasn't a technical um, 
position that he'd got. Is that right? You keep talking for me tonight. You know, these are things I, pr I might not, you know, I, I, I might not remember. <laughs> it depends how much you've had to drink. Well, I've had, I've had much to drink. Um, it, no, uh, Craig, listen, Ian Crane is, for a start, you are you, oh, just... Just, you can tell for fuck's sake, can't you, Mark? It's that one of them, and it? it's like someone does an Ian Crane thing, and you put your fucking head in your hands. <laughs> you know, and it's particularly t tonight. Someone in in, uh, in chat rooms put something about Mark Winders, and again another one. I'm, I just want to put my head in my hands. You know, yeah. he's just <clears throat> you just you just start to realise, isn't it? You start to realise that literally. You know, they and and I'm basing it on five thousand um, subscribers now, because I figure right if Facebook allow you five thousand uh, five thousand friends, right? They probably done that. So as soon as you got there, they then go and research you, see what you're saying. Because as soon as I got to five thousand friends on Facebook, that's when I got taken off and like harshly. Well, I couldn't set up a new account with new name, new password, nothing. So I think it's going to be the same with uh, YouTube. And I think they're going to look at people. And if they've done their, um, you know, if, if they're pushing um, an agenda for them, they're going to be happy with them uh, moving along, which, of course, I would never be doing, <laughs> no matter what, because I'm always just pointing out things that don't, people don't point out, such as the real meaning of Nazi and the things people I don't think, a lot of people might be too scared to say, let's say that much, right? Um, so that's why I'm getting hit now. That's why I'm getting, you know, I was already hit. I've been hit twice now. Right? I've, I've only got 500 subscribers. I've only been on three months and I've been hit twice. And, and you can all see the video where the hate speech, right? It's please jump in a fence. And I'm laughing at them because it's clearly a, a staged, uh, um set up for the camera and you can see them all running around they ones where they're, they're 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 not running they're um prancing like little horses <laughs> and it's amazingly funny but to say it's hate speech and me to actually go and say and i actually asked them please show me what is hate, hate speech in this because it's literally not a word of hate in it and it's like wow um so it's a bit it's a bit like Phew. so you gotta well, be careful out there but like i said don't trust me because if i was the elite i'd have me up here doing this for some reason or another do you know what i mean for some agenda but mm. I, I, it's, it's hard to find one when it's hard to find it's it's hard for people to have a real go at me or say i'm saying something wrong when they've got nothing to attack and and what what have they got to attack what label they haven't got a right they haven't got a left they haven't got a red they haven't got a blue they haven't got a religion what 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 they can attack me for I'm white if they see me, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want to come on to the biggest um, shill probably ever. Greta fucking Thunberg twat. I heard today, and I don't know, I'm asking a question. The funny got sideways. No, it weren't that at all. All right, okay. That she's being offered some job by a government setting some department up or uh, does anybody know what that is I, I mean i don't watch news but somebody asked me about it today and i went uh, i don't know well anyway. not, i i don't watch news obviously no. i think she's been in i think she's been in bristol for summer i don't know oh, that was uh, school strike or something weren't it a school strike yeah i mean kids are gonna love a day off school aren't they they'll yeah. fucking go if you went down and told them you know let's have a day off school because fucking they're gonna get rid of shag it yeah. To do it. Yeah. Off school be do, by the way. Um <laughs> Yeah, that I mean somebody just put it was an inside job. Greta Thunberg will get a Nobel Peace Prize. You're probably dead right. Um what I just want to point out a couple of things apart from this global warming and climate change or whatever the fuck you're calling it this week. Um when I was you know when C B radios were, you know, the in thing. Um, I'd be what I don't know in my teens, I guess. Um, and we had this thing called um, Skip, which was white noise. Um, it's the noisy bit that you turn the dial and go until it shuts up, and that's all the distant stuff in the background. Well, 
there was this 11 year cycle of sunspots which caused this skip and how it was explained to me was you got the earth and because it's a ball you can't transmit a sound in anything more than a straight line so that's the distance you can realistically transmit a on a radio to somebody else who wants to talk to you but if you could bounce your signal off the ionosphere you could obviously go up and back down and go a greater distance now we did this or we did the greater distance what the technical shit was i don't know but the way it was explained to me was the sun has an 11 year cycle of sunspots and increased radio noise and this forms around the ionosphere around the earth and that is what amateur radio enthusiasts etc use to bounce a signal off to go a greater distance so even back then we were talking about an 11 year cycle of the sun um sunspots increased radiation yada 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 but we were talking about it as an 11 year cycle and the only thing they never bring in when they're talking about climate change global warming blah blah blah, blah everything else nobody ever mentions the fact of the sun and that it emits all this fucking heat and then people look at the news and believe that there isn't really an agenda i don't know i, I i'm i was watching somebody yesterday and it's when you was talking about like the radio waves and funny enough i had a cb i was called mad moggy <laughs> um what was that big boots I was Mad Moggy. I, one nine. Anyone for Mad Moggy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel I was about twenty. But but um. But when you were saying about the frequencies and all of that, right? I was mm. watching a guy yesterday, and he was a bit. He's he's very awake to what's going on in the world, but he's very biblical. Mm. Um. But he was saying how he thinks like all this technology is uh, wizardry from some other you know something else there's no way humanity can make this shit you know we we haven't got the brains to be like this where we can like do what we're doing now really right talk to each other across without anything like it's just fucking weird right and i, and I never really looked into that and when he was saying it, i was thinking you know he's fucked up in it like i i always used to think to myself how do we get fucking images through those little wires and then it goes and it, it you know you kind of like i don't know you, you kind of think to yourself fuck you know is there more like something much bigger that you don't know probably right there's probably something like we believe we kind of got a grasp on how they work but what is it we the shit we don't know because we've never heard of is the shit that could be like fucking great yeah, yeah. <laughs> if he, yeah exactly if there is a key out there they ain't gonna fucking show us it easy are they no no i mean i think the only thing we can really be certain of is that um we don't know the truth and certainly we're not going to get to find it out by watching that fucking oblong thing in the corner of the room yeah oh definitely not no i, I, I yeah, think don't talk about my wife like that <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's right, Jason. <laughs> I watched I watched two films the other night with my son there. The first two films I'd watched in probably about three or four months. And the first bit of TV, like, you know, mainstream I'd watched really, apart from when I'm pointing out news stories that come up on YouTube. Um and I mean one one of them was shit. What was that one? That was uh oh I think I'd seen it. It was all right, but it's a bit shit. But the Joker, and there's so much fucking uh you know i i tried to watch that and failed but then we watched that um eddie murphy one uh my name is i am someone someone in chat will know i am my name is saying or other that's not too bad but it's just because eddie murphy you know back in the 80s weren't he you all we all loved his films back in the 80s didn't we but now mm. i'm still like uh, is he one of them? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> well, they've let Jim Carrey come back and do stuff, haven't they? Even though he came out and basically said you're all a bunch of fucking assholes. But they've let Jim Carrey back in. I think they've just agreed to agree that everybody thinks he's mental. Yeah, but didn't they suicide his bird? 
Yeah, well, I'd heard that, but I don't know. I honestly don't know. Oh, it's exciting, though. What's going to happen on next week's edition of This Crazy <laughs> World? The only yeah. thing we know is that the shit they tell us isn't really fucking true. Yeah, fucking that's, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. Just don't trust fucking... Don't trust them. Don't trust... You, know, you don't need to trust people, do you? You just, you just got to fucking fight until you can get out. If you can't get out, then you got to fight until you can, right? Well, that's right. Well, she'll destroy her. Listen, it's been fucking fantastic, man. I'm getting a bit knackered. Uh, don't know about you two. Um, but uh, I'd ask you at this point if, where people can find your stuff. But I, you've got a bit shoot account now, have you? Or is that, is that something that you had running alongside as well? Yeah, I, can't, I don't really use bit shoot. But now I'm banned, obviously. it's uh, I've started to... Uh, if I haven't really been doing that many videos. It's kind of given me a break of doing them because... As you know, I like to report as I go along. I like to just see saying, go, well, let's show people the, what's really going on here or, you know, whatever. But so it's given me a break of that. But when something like people are, you know, targeting me to straight away try and uh, push me down, even though they, you know, just point out that it's one of, it's one of the... Uh, it's one of the shields that are funded to do this and exactly you can just i mean that video that i put up there will show you like how they work you know exactly what they're doing how they're now going from tommy to the nationalist party and why they're targeting me yeah so when i you know when i'm getting a week's ban just after this guy's done that it's it's clear to see that my youtube channel is going to be fucking gone probably within two weeks of me getting it back right if i'm lucky um and then will i bother with bit shoot bit shoot takes forever to load up you know youtube's pain in the ass itself in it but bit shoot's like and it's kind of like you kind of feel like fuck it you know no one's really listening are they there's not enough people out there the, the ones you're talking to the ones who do listen they already know right it's like yeah but when you get somebody in the chat room early that we had that guy who was uh, asking the questions about tommy all right he's gone away uh, sorry, they've gone away. It could be a bloke woman. I don't know. Um, they've gone away. And who knows? He might just kind of go, mm, what was that guy saying? And it might just have planted a little seed that a week, a month, a year from now might. You know, you don't, you don't know. All we can do is share our thoughts. That's all we can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, I think also, like, I, I don't want the uh, YouTube to go down. Not not because I want to use it so much, just because it's there, right? So if people in the future want to say, oh, you said this or you said that, I can go, bang, actually, this is what I fucking said then. Thank you very much. You know what I mean? So uh, it, it's, it's, it's just there for my own being as well. So I can say, look, I fucking warned you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because fuck, you know, it's, it's one thing, but people like to mix your words and say you said this or you told them not to run and all this shit, right? But at least you can turn around and go, no, actually, I told you all to fucking run. <laughs> told you all to get the fuck out if you can. Get the fuck out. Run. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Thanks anyway, Mark, for coming on and uh, spending a couple of hours with us here. And uh, obviously, uh, the people even right. though you have banned you, very naughty boy. Always a pleasure. Cheers. And, uh, I know that lady who's not speaking to you. It's only because she thinks that you didn't really take her side and didn't give him the person who had a go at her. Um, you didn't have a go at them enough to point out facts. But I think that's just the way you work, and she probably didn't get it. But she's got no grief with you because I had a word for her. Oh, I don't even know what we're talking about. Uh, you'll know. <laughs> oh, 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 I know. Yeah, I reckon I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah you know. Okay, like, all right. We'll, we'll, we'll probably sum up for just after we've uh, ended the broadcast, so you can tell yeah, me. Hang about at the end, Mark, because I'm, yeah. I'm still. Uh, um, I'm still. I think she's cool with you, anyway. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah. thanks to uh, thanks to Mark. Aid, last word from you, Paul. Uh, yeah, look, looking forward to tomorrow night, Owen. Owen, right, Owen Lloyd Martin, yeah, all the way from Portugal. We'll be talking about all sorts of stuff, um, just like we always do. And, of course, later on in the week when uh, me and Adi have had a couple of drinks on Friday night, 
Um, well, there'll probably be uh, an after dark as well, which is, we usually do these days, don't we? And I'm going to try and make the most of you while I've still got you because I'm going to be on my own uh, in, in, in not very long. Can, in a couple can, of weeks. can I just point out that I have um, absolutely, I haven't even got a lighter. I've got nothing to smoke here and, and I've been drinking orange juice. Okay. Because um, if I get piss tested in Thailand and you've got anything in your system, we'll kick you out. <laughs> <laughs> and it takes about three weeks to get out of your system, doesn't it? So, you know, <laughs> like I, I, I'm <laughs> alcohol only for the next couple of weeks. Crossing yeah. all the I's and dotting all the T's, eh? There you go. I don't know. Let's hope See, we don't get tested. Please, look, everyone. Over here, that. I can say what the fuck I like because, well, it's not my country. I share it with it. Loads of other people, but I was born here. So I've got a, an opinion about um, our hierarchy and how it all is a load of shit. But when you go to another country, I'm a guest. So I have to act as a guest. And uh, also I'd like to just mention as well um, a big uh, congratulations to uh, Tyson Fury who won his um, heavyweight championship of the world at the weekend. And the only reason I'm raising this is because He's from Gypsy Descent, and I know you are. He's one of your people, Ada. So uh, he's the Gypsy King. So uh, you'll i just have to be our very own Gypsy Queen. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, then. <laughs> all right. Well, we're going anyway. Take it we'll easy. See you tomorrow night. See you later. See you later.